Okay, so what we're going to do is make a fairly simple object and map its faces to this ready-made UV template. Now, you see five elements here, and we're going to use a six-sided box, but not map the bottom onto this, because we're not going to see that. So um, here's the process. I'm going to shut this down now and actually get rid of the modifier totally. And so here's what you start with. The template image, of course, you throw onto the box as a, a diffuse bitmap going into a standard. And then all the magic happens with mapping. So you make a box. It's 15 by 25 by 65. Keyboard entry. Keeps everything nice and uh, regularized, tame. Okay, so next thing is to open the unwrap UVW. Click on the polygon, which is exactly the same as face in the modify stack. And then we want control A select all okay and we go straight then to open UV editor now this can expand up a bit to get a bit more space zoom too far. Okay, so you've got all the faces. There's six faces, but we could be dealing with a whole load of clusters of individual polygons. So them all grouped together using this box mapping process. But box mapping, as you can see, is uh, everything all sharing the same space. And we want to separate it out. So what we're going to do is grab in this map. Now because I've already got the material on it's suggesting that we use this also as the uh, mapping template. To sort of uh, come back to the start really, the, the idea of doing this is with a very simple object. This box obviously is uh, pretty much flat faced. There's a little bit of um, irregularity in terms of the lid but um, it's very sort of geometrically based flat sided and so it does lend itself very easily to this technique. Um, and there's quite a few objects you'll find that get a, they come out okay through flatten mapping without making any change to the settings. So let's flatten map it and uh, what it's doing is separating out into clusters on the basis of the angles between faces. If it's more than 45 degrees, it'll make it a separate cluster. Hence this result here. Okay, now, if I click in space, deselectors, click around in these boxes, you can see which is which. That's obviously the top set. If you've got segments, so if your box is uh, segmented, then you'll want to use this one. And that means you get in the whole clusters. That means everything in the green outlines. So there could be many different polys in, in a single green outline arranged in a cluster. Okay, so now this one here, a bit of jitteriness. This one here is a uh, bottom. Let's move up here. An orbit round. You can see the map icon and there's the bottom view. So we don't actually need to map this. Oh, and another thing. Um, if we just move up to here, we'll choose the freeform tool. Now the freeform tool 
allows you to move, rotate and scale all with the same tool depending on where on the cluster you are clicked. Now, so in the middle it's a move like that and I'll just move this one into, into position here. What I'm going to do is get the one corner, it's the bottom left corner into position and then if I move to the top right the icon changes to show that we can scale it so the corners are scaling now if we wanted to rotate just move to the middle of a, of a side and there's the rotate icon but all the rotations are 90 degrees and there's a ready-made tool for that right, I'm just going to move this quickly into place time is short and the demands of videoing and magnifying and running 3D are showing a bit of lag lagginess on this. Right, I'm going to need the control key now to select the other three elements together and I'm just going to use this rotate 90 which does the job nice and quickly then deselect and start picking them individually bottom left corner in place and then scale the top right one I might leave this a bit raggy because my system has a bit of problem with all this multitasking Okay, so I'm going to the top of this lip, but the position of the clusters means I'm going to miss the the lip itself out. It's going to sort of fall outside the mapped area, but it'll look fine as long as I get the maps roughly the same size between them. Yeah, it looks okay. Okay, so click in space, and I'm just going to leave that window on for the moment and have a quick look round. Yep, that looks okay. So the next thing to do is we're going to make this ridge that goes on top. So we'll go to top level and oh one thing I've forgotten is rotation so that's plainly upside down. That red mark in there should be at the top. I think I can assume, yes, it's all upside down. So uh, what I need to do is flip all of the uh, round apart from this top one. So I'm just going to go oops, go to uh, face and then with each one give it two spins on the 90. I have to do them individually or the placement as a rotating group will go out of whack and you should be able to see now the uh, just wait a moment and sort of ping any moment still waiting I'll try deselecting see if that jogs it there we go so back up to top level and it takes off the kind of some of the selection artifacts in general it's okay what we're looking for is match up between the underside of the top lip reasonable it's not the best but it'll do and uh, the hinge area as well now I've had to have a few goes at doing this and so far I've been meant been getting the uh, at least the hinges to be meeting at the right on the right pair of sides um, but they're not very well aligned this time so that would be something I'd fiddle with to uh, try and fix it but we haven't got time for that ok so we're going to build the ridge in now now this means 
putting on an edit poly. This allows us to uh, monkey around with edge creation and moving a few things. But what we do need to do, which was just like in the previous tutorial, is we need to have this ribbon of tools available and we need to turn this one on, preserve UVs. Because we're going to be making changes to the geometry, we don't want to change the precious mapping that we've got sorted out. I'm just looking at the top here and that ridge isn't quite in the middle. Still, let's let the modelling and the lights cast solve that. Okay, so we're going to edge mode. What I'm going to do now is use some of the uh, loop and ring selection tool, in particular the, this ring tool here, to instantly select a ring of edges around the model. We're going to make a, a middle line of edge that goes down where you can see the ridges. So if I select that one, now we need to check, just put the cursor here, you can see four edges selected and that's as it should be. So it's all four edges around that ring there. And what we want to do is just connect them up so there's a, an edge line going down here. And then we'll look at the other two. So we need to go to uh, loop subsection of tools and hold shift down and click connect. This gives us the settings. And this setting here of one edge is good. Now, once I deselect this, you won't see it. I'll just OK that. That's a good position. I'm just going to turn on edged faces because we'll need it for seeing where everything is. So there's edge faces on. Now we need to uh, deselect that. Control D. And do another ring select so it's still live there, look. And that gets edges going in a ring that way around the object. And that should be six. There we go. Because we've got two new ones added. One at the top, one at the bottom. We don't really need the one at the bottom, but it can stay there for now. Now this time, we could use Swift Loop to put edges in here in a slightly imprecise way. But um, you kind of know Swift Loop already. Let's look at what you can do with the Connect. So back to Loop. Shift down again and Connect. This time... We want two edges, if you look at the object. They're nice and evenly spaced, but that's not what we want. So we're going to pinch it. And by just by dragging this slider, we can get them to the end of the sort of rusty ridge marks. And it's sort of mathematically evenly placed. The wear and tear is there from the image, but the essential structure is kind of rigidly symmetrical. Okay. So with that in position, Control D, deselect everything. Now we just want to pick one edge. Now that's come up six edges selected because, zooming up to here, still got ring select on. Again, Control D. And this time with, oop, I missed it. There it is. Edge 31 selected. Okay, I'm just going to a little bit to get more of a side profile and do move and this time right click move and just drag it up by hand and get something like the real thing don't want to overcook it, look ridiculous but at least the texture There'll be so a little bit of stretching because effectively we've increased the surface area the same amount of texture is covering. But um, it's not enough to really notice. So, there you go. Um, come to top level by clicking edge again. Click in space to deselect everything and with it we'll also get rid of edged faces. Turn that off. F4. Lazy way. And there, so there's the finished thing. 
Okay, bits of purple is where the mapping could do with a bit more treatment and the hinge area needs a bit more. And uh, yeah, but other than that, that's that's good. Okay, more to come.